Mary Ann LaBarge, Chair, and I'm joined by Ward 2 Councilor Karen Foster, Vice Chair, Ward 7 City Councilor Rachel Muir, and Ward 1 City Councilor Michael Quinlan. I am required to announce that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Laura, will you call the roll? Here. It's hard to hear you, Laura. Oh, Laura, you're muted. I'm muted, but we're going to get feedback if I unmute. So Michael Quinlan. Here. Karen Foster. Here. And Councillor Maori. Here. OK. Um, public comment. First, is there any member of the public who would like to address the committee on any subject? Are there being no members of the public present? Do we have Ashlyn? Does she want to speak? Because she's showing up. She just oh, she sent a, a message. Ashlyn's just here to listen. OK, she just wants to listen. All right. Um, so there is no public comment. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of July 20th, 2020. Move to approve, please. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. <clears throat> department update, Parks and Recreation Department. We are joined today by welcoming, she's not here yet? Is she going to come? Well, let's go right into the appointment, and if she does come, we'll, we'll take her. How's that sound? Okay, if Anne Marie Mojo, she apparently is not here right now. So we're going to go right into appointments and evaluations. And if she does come in, we'll finish off what we were doing for that appointment and go into Anne Marie Mojo. Because I think she did say something to you, Laura, that didn't she have a four o'clock appointment? Okay, all right. Okay, we're gonna go into items referred to the committee. Uh, 20-117, appointment to the Arts Council, referred by City Council on September 3rd, 2020. Michael, uh-oh, Abbott, Abbottitello, 161 Main Street, Leeds, term September 2020 through June 2023 to fill a vacancy. Councilor Muir, um, could you report on your conversation with him, please? Oh, thank you, Councilor Muir. Yes, I had a, another lovely conversation with uh, Michael last week. Uh, he's uh, the technical director at the Academy of Music. He's well placed in the art scene downtown and he uh, I would, what I didn't know is he has a um, very long background as a professional dancer. And so we talked a little bit about that. Um, he's really excited to serve in this way. He thinks it's kind of what he's um, been grooming to do for a few years. And so I think he's going to be a great addition to the Arts Council. Yeah. Do you want to complete it? Are oh, you going to? 
motion to recommend. Second. Second. To recommend Mike Abbott Gallo for the Arts Council. Okay, is there a second? Second. Karen. Okay. Thanks for the coaching. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any discussion? So we have a positive recommendation going to full city council. So there's no discussion. So if not, roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Maori. Did, um, when you mentioned that he was a dancer, did you tell him how you did the penguin stroll jumping into the water? <laughs> uh-huh. Ah, you, I was hoping you forgot about that. <laughs> yes, I didn't. Yes. Okay, yeah, no, I did not, uh, I did not brag about that one. I had to make sure, Karen, I threw that one in. <laughs> Okay, we are next. 20-127, um, appointments to various committees referred by City Council on September 17th, 2020. Arts Council, Ashlyn Crady, is it Crady? Crady. 386 Bridge Street, Northampton, Mass, term September 2020 through June 2023 to fill a vacancy. And, um, Councillor Quinlan, could you report on your conservation with your conversation with Ashlyn, please? Oh, I sure can. Uh, Ashlyn and I had a chance to speak on Friday for a few minutes. Uh, we had a really nice conversation. I was pleased that she's, uh, you know, a younger person that wants to become involved in the city uh, and bring some um, some passion and, and uh, expertise to uh, to the group that she wants to join in the Arts Council. Um, we spoke specifically about. Um, you know, her work in booking events here in the area. Um, some of her, her uh, work in college had to do with film festivals and gallery work. And I asked how that translates really to, to our Arts Council. Uh, and, and Ashton talked about uh, that the experience planning those events and promoting and community outreach skills were really uh, things that, that she has a lot of pride in herself about, that she's able to do well. Um, you know, uh, she also mentioned that there's been a lot of uh, opportunity for her uh, through some of these things to, to work as part of a team and to help build the team, both in leadership roles as well as, as uh, members of the team. So that was something that made me very comfortable as well. Uh, the one thing that I, I asked was if, if there was one event that you could make a bigger deal, what would it be? Uh, and, and Ashton mentioned that the film festival, um, you know, the Northampton Film Festival is something that that uh, actually in, in the time of COVID could even be interesting because it could be done as a drive-in opportunity as well to allow people to be distant, but also uh, just that, that that's something that, that she felt really strongly about. So we had a great conversation and I was really, like I mentioned at the beginning, very happy to see a younger person wanting to jump in. Uh, and so I would uh, recommend that we uh, push forward Ashlyn Kradick to the Arts Council with a positive recommendation. Second. So there's a positive recommend, recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion on Ashland? If not, roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Okay, Conservation Commission, we have um, Jennifer Smith, 24 Audubon Road, Leeds term September 2020 through June 2023 to fill a vacancy. And um, we have Councillor Mayor to report on your conversation with Jennifer, please. Yeah, Jennifer said she's been wanting to serve for a while in that position at conservation. It's been a lifelong um, interest and she's um, She's really grounded in the details. I didn't know that she was one of the co-founders of Crimson and Clover Farm right down the street from me. So we talked a lot about that and we talked a little bit about invasive and native plants in our area. Kind of went off, <laughs> got off subject in a delightful way. But um, she seems very grounded in the um, kind of the minutia basically of what, what it takes to conserve land. Um, she's got, I think, a lot of skills that way. Um, and she's just very excited to be a part of it. So I, I think she'd be a great addition as well to the conservation. 
Uh, so I'd make a motion to recommend. Uh, a positive recommendation. A positive recommendation. Or am I cutting off discussion if I do that right now? Uh, is there a motion? Is that a second, Councillor Blaster? A uh, second. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm never clear right. when to make the motion. Sorry. So we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Jennifer Smith to the Conservation Commission with a positive recommend recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Yeah, if not, roll call, please. Laura? Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Mayor? Yes. And Councillor Labarge? Yes. Disability Commission. Kathy Murray, 50 Laurel Park, Northampton, Mass. For 2020 through June 2023rd to fill a vacancy. I had a lengthy talk with Kathy Murray, lengthy. And Councillor um, Foster, I think you really like meeting her. Very interested with people with disabilities. Um, she's thanking me for reviewing her application for the Disability Commission. She has her interest in the world of accessibility started a long time ago while she was a student at Hampshire College. At that time, she was pursuing degree in elementary and special education. And Massachusetts had just passed and was implementing Chapter 766. She did her Division Three Senior Project on Mainstreaming, Go Lead, a seminar on the topic and completed internship at Belchtown State School and in the Northampton Public Schools. After graduation, she worked at Oak Hill School in Hartford with multiply handicapped deaf blind preschoolers, and then went on to being special needs coordinator at a Project Head Start in Springfield. After that came a few twists and turns during which she became self-employed and then came to her current position as Director of Finance and Operations at the Montessori School of Northampton. A few years ago, a friend of hers started having issues with his hands and his balance, which was eventually diagnosed as a motor neuron disease. Helping him read kindly my interest in accessibility and accommodations because of that experience, she became certified as a caregiving consultant and caregiving facilitator and began moderating online to chat groups. The research she was doing to find accommodations that would work for him as his illness progress motivated her to both start a Facebook page where some of those ideas are featured and to pursue an ADA coordinator certification, which she just completed this August. At this point, she realized I wanted to both learn about how the ADA works in the real world and the real world and share whatever expertise she has is what led her to pursue appointment to the Disability Commission. She loves sitting on in the meetings and learning about the challenges residents with disabilities in Northampton face and the innovative solutions that are possible. In terms of what she would like to see happen in Northampton, here are a few of her thoughts. Northampton should be a place where everyone can be safe, participate and enjoy all that the city has to offer. She's a strong believer in universal design and creating avenues for universal participation. Building this is beneficial to the large boomer generation which has experienced new limitations, sensory, genitive, and physical, at a rapid rate due to aging and illnesses. She asks, has the city asked its residents with disabilities what accommodations they would like to see and what obstacles to accessibility they experience? If so, 
is that information used to inform my city decision? I would like to see the city have a mechanism for addressing the impact of any new programs or sweeping changes on the lives of its residents with disabilities. And I have to say, her and I talked a good almost 55 minutes on the phone. And I am definitely recommending Kathy Murr for the positive recommendation to the Commission on Disabilities to the full city council. Second. Okay. So there's a positive recommendation to full city council. Um, so is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura, please. Councillor Foster. Yes. yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Lesson. Yes. Thank you. Councillor okay, Clark, um, yes. I, have, I just have a process question. Um, so when uh, the candidates are recommended to council and if they're voted positive, uh, if they're voted in on council, do they, they get a letter or they get notified when to serve? Yes, okay. Clear. What the, the procedure is once it's automatically sent to city council, uh -huh. it's on the consent agenda. Right. After we, that's approved, the consent agenda, which includes all the appointments, it then goes to the city clerk's office. She then sends a letter to the applicants of their approval of being on the committee board or whatever that they've been appointed for. They then have to go ahead and call the city clerk, make an appointment to get sworn in. Ah, great. This is good information. Thank you for so much for that, Councilor. You're welcome. Anytime. Okay. Human Rights Commission, um, Susan McDonald, is it Bolanis? One Chapman Way, Unit 7517, Smith College, Northampton. Um, term September 2020 through June 2022 to fill a vacancy. And we have Councillor Foster. Could you report on your compensation with Susan McDonald, um, Bolanis, please? Yes, glad to. Um, I was able to speak with her over the weekend. And I'd like to echo um, what Councillor Quinlan saw with Ashlyn, um, her appointment or recommendation for um, the Arts Council. It's really exciting to see people who are younger stepping up um, to serve on boards and commissions. I think it's, it's really important and will make the quality of, of our boards and commissions just that much stronger and more representative of who's living in Northampton. Um, so Susan is actually a second year student at Smith College. Um, she lives on campus year round, so she's in the community year round. And she is majoring in economics and government. And so she was really looking for opportunities to get involved in local government. And the Human Rights, Human Rights Commission um, really spoke to her. She uh, had studied in China uh, when she was younger and was especially invested um, following the council um, resolution um, calling out the anti-Asian xenophobia we see in response um, to COVID-19. Um, that was something that touched her and sort of showed her some of the, the power that local decision makers can have. Um, you know, she's, she doesn't necessarily have, um, you know, something that she's looking to implement, but she's looking to work with the commission, very invested in human rights issues and um, just kind of looking to see how she can serve Northampton. Um, so it was, it was a great conversation and I thank her. For that. Um, and I move to make a positive recommendation um, for her to serve um, on the Human Rights Commission. Thank you. Second. Is there, uh, is there okay. So we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Susan McDonald Bolonis to the Human Rights Commission with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call please, Laura. I can't hear it. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Okay. Planning Board. Jana White, 
full member term September 2020 through June 2022. And Councillor Foster, could you report on your conversation with Jana White? Glad to. Um, we had a great conversation last week. Um, and Jana White's appointment would be to go from being an associate member of the planning board to being a full member of the planning board. Um, she's been an associate member for a few years, really loves it. Um, she has learned a lot and something she's really been reflecting on is, um, uh, you know, kind of focusing on public input and planning. And I think like so many local government decisions, there's a lot of factors involved. And so um, it's something she's been really considering of how you solicit public input from people who may not be accessing these meetings through traditional channels and acknowledging and hearing that input, even if sometimes decisions need to go a direction that, um, you know, maybe is not going to make everybody happy, which on the planning board, you, you can't make everybody happy. Um, so she's very much aware of that. Um, one thing that I think is in particular for planning board, great about Jana is that she is a renter. Um, she lives in a multifamily house in town. Um, and so she's similar to some of the other appointments we're seeing here today, a different demographic um, than the sort of majority, um, I'm guessing on boards and commissions. And so that's uh, nice to see. Um, and, you know, she mentioned, we were sort of talking about some of the things that come up a lot. And she said, you know, very often on planning board, she'll, she'll see a lot of interest um, and input and discussion around trees parking and multifamilies, um, that those tend to be the things that, that um, they really, that draw a lot of, uh, a variety of input. Um, I, you know, think that, that she's excited about going from an associate member to a full member, and I move to recommend uh, her appointment to the planning board. Second. There's a second. Okay. <clears throat> um, we have a motion as a second to forward the appointment of Jana White to the planning board with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any other discussion? If not, roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Mayori. Yes. Okay. Crystal, is it Tate? T-A-I-T? Yep. 46 Upland Road leads. Um, she's a, a associate member. The term is September 2020 through June 2021 to fill the unexpired term of Jana White. Councillor Quinlan, could you give us a report on your conversation with um, Chris Tate? I can. Uh, thank you. Chris uh, Tate and I spoke over the weekend as well. Uh, and I, before I, before I talk to, about that, let me just mention that on Thursday, I had a chance to speak to Carolyn Mish, because uh, I really didn't understand what an associate member's role was. And I wanted to make sure that I understood that before I went asking any questions uh, of Chris. So uh, Carolyn spent, you know, about just about 10 minutes on the phone with me, very generous with her time to explain uh, how the roles of a full member versus an associate member work. So uh, I got a lot out of that. And I just want to thank Carolyn for that. Um, so then when I spoke to Chris, I felt much more prepared. Um, you know, Chris is, uh, has uh, 15 years as a licensed civil engineer, uh, so has presented to planning boards on the other side of the table uh, as an applicant. Uh, and that was really an interesting part of the conversation because to understand that um, his specific experience in site design, zoning, stormwater mitigation, and wetlands permitting really gives him an understanding of the process, but also not just the process, but, but what's behind the process. How do you plan for these sort of things on a project side to then present to a municipality and ask for permission to do it? So uh, I think Chris has a leg up on that, which was, which was great. Um, you know, the one thing I would mention uh, that, that gave me uh, just one, one bit of pause was I asked him, because uh, now he's, he's no longer doing that um, consulting work. He's now an employee at Bay State Health uh, as a project manager. Uh, and I said, would that create any conflicts? And he said, it would, there may be a, a position where he may have to recuse himself from deliberation if Bay State was an applicant. Uh, for mm -hmm. something with the city. Uh, but we talked about that and he understood what that would entail to, to have to do that. And as an associate member, um, you know, that's not necessarily uh, going to come up immediately 
uh, for him. So, and, and, and uh, you know, the other thing, the last thing I'll mention is that Chris sent this application into the city uh, well over a year ago. Uh, was interested in either the Zoning Board of Appeals, the, the, the Planning Board here, or the Conservation Commission. Uh, and now finally a, a spot is open here as an associate member of the Planning Board, which was initially his first choice. Uh, so uh, he's getting in where he wants to get in uh, and, and an opportunity to maybe move up later if a vacancy occurs or maybe move to one of the other commissions if a vacancy occurs there. So uh, Chris is really committed to trying to do uh, get involved in the city. So uh, I, I was want to support that and I would move to, that we, uh, uh, send Chris's uh, application through with a positive recommendation to the full council. There a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Chris Tate um, as an associate member to the planning board. Is there any other discussion? If not, roll call, please, Laura. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. And Councilor Quinlan. Yes. New business. Hmm. We have two new appointments, which was referred out on October 1st. Keith Alexander to the Arts Council and Jeff Jones, Northampton Housing Authority Board Commissioners. Do I have a counselor that would be interested in interviewing Kent Alexander for Arts Council? I'd be glad to. Yes, and he lives at 174 Island Road, Northampton, Mass. He's to fill a vacancy. So do I have one of you counselors who are willing to go ahead and interview Kent Alexander? I'd be glad to. Thank you, Councillor Foster. The second is Jeff Jones, UFCW Local 1459, Organized Labor Representative, 76 Woods Road, Florence, Mass. Term March 2020 through February 2025, which is a reappointment. And I will go ahead and interview Jeff Jones there's a problem right now. There is, if you look in your packet, there is nothing on him at all, at all. And Laura, you can talk about how you just called court on this situation. We have nothing on him. No telephone number, no application or anything. Applied, but he's applied this is a reappointment, so we should have something from the staff application. Okay, so I will go ahead and wait and see if they get the paperwork on him. He is from Ward 6, so I will hopefully be able to, I know Jeff anyways, but I'm not going to go knocking on his door. I want the office to go ahead and get us the application and the information that we need. So, anyways, Council that takes care. Yes. On those two, um, on those two applications, will those be uh, discussed in our meeting on the fifteenth within the? Uh, no. Uh, no. No. They will go all to our next meeting. Yes, November. Okay. When is it? The second, November second. Yeah. 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 Okay. The Great. only Thank one. You. The only one we're doing is a special meeting on that appointment through the mayor. Yeah, the, assess the assessor. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Okay, I would like to have the counselors, I want you to put your thinking caps on again. And I don't know, Laura, if, if we're going to get Anne-Marie Mosho to come back, or what should we do here? If not, because I know the counselors, they have great thinking caps, and we could go ahead and get some department heads to be coming in without some problems here. Yeah. Who would you like to see come in, counselors? Can you think of anybody that you would like to see for next time? Yes, Counselor Quinlan. Well, similar to the rec department, uh, it seems to me that the senior services are limited in what they're uh, putting out right now. Uh, but, you know, 
their their budget was still uh, you know pretty significant. Uh, they did lay off a few people, but they're still employing a lot of people. I'm wondering what what are they offering our seniors right now? I'd love to know more. Would you like to to have her come in, Marie Westberg? Yeah, if that was possible, I think that would be great. The same as the rec department. She can kind of explain what they are doing right now for our seniors. I know. So what we can do is see if we can get Marie Mosho to come in. And we'll also try to get in Marie Westberg. There's no reason why we can't get two to come in. Okay, we'll limit like 20 minutes and 20 minutes and then do our appointments. Okay. Because there's other departments. I would like to have the Department of Public Works to come in. I mean, I do know for a fact, just talking to the director that she laid off quite a bit of staff there. I'd like to know how they have been doing throughout the summer, the streets and getting ready with, for the winter and so forth like that. And how is the staffing situation? To me, this is very, very critical. Oh, that, that might be more important than the senior services, honestly. All right, why don't we have, see if we can get Donna Lascalia to come in and maybe we could get Donna to come in, what, four o'clock, a decent time possibly, or, or what time, 4.30? At what time? Four, Four o'clock. Okay. Can you try to get Donna to come in? Thank you very much. Okay. So do we just want to stick with Donna? And how about Anne Marie Mosher? I mean, she at some point we need her to come in. Yeah, we have we have asked twice, yeah. Yeah. I've been getting phone calls about the rec department and I don't know how to answer anything. Mm. So if we got Donna at four o'clock and then have, um, how about like, what, 20 after, have Anne Marie Mojo come in and that's another 20 minutes for her to speak and so forth. I think that's long enough. Do you counselors? And we can have like a brief question and answering for her, whatever questions we want to ask. Okay, so see what you can work out. Donna Lascalia, and I, and I know if we're going to ask you counselors to write up some questions that you would like to ask Donna. I know I have quite a bit. And also, I think with Anne Marie Mosher, I don't know if any counselors had sent her any kind of questions for her to answer? I didn't either. Okay, so we need to get a definite from Anne Marie Mojo if she can come on November 2nd. Okay, thank you, Laura. Then I thought maybe possibly we could get the police department to come in too. Okay, that's it. We're almost done. Council Labarge? Yes. Well, while we're here chatting new business, um, have we had any update from the mayor's office about, um, and, and I know they've been so busy handling COVID, um, but about uh, our information request regarding the demographics who's, who's serving on boards and commissions? Laura, have you talked? Um, I had talked to Councilor Mayor when we um, confirmed because she mentioned that the, um, the educational collaborative was going to be doing that grant project. So I was thinking that if they were going to be gathering that as a part of that, we wouldn't ask the mayor's office. But then um, I think after Councilor Mayor and I talked, and we kind of realized that they'll probably be having to get that information from the city as opposed to so someone from the city is going to have to provide it to them. So, but then I wanted to check, I think before I contacted the mayor's office, because Councilor Foster, I, at one point, did you say you were willing to actually contact the chairs too? Because I wasn't sure if I should contact the mayor's office and make that request, or if I should make the request that you, you know, they could send to you contacting. So I was a little, need a little bit of direction. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's, 
that's a question for the committee. Um, certainly, I feel comfortable contacting chairs of boards and commissions and, and asking. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want the mayor's office to feel like um, there's not another path forward. Um, I would certainly be glad to, to take on some of that work. Okay. Oh, and that reminds me, I'm sorry, Councilor Mayor, I just, um, yeah, go ahead. while I was talking with um, Gianna regarding the planning board, I think something that we had discussed as a committee back at the beginning was trying to get some data on socioeconomic status, which is a difficult question to ask, but then it seemed maybe the question is, do you own a rent? Which is not necessarily, it's not, I know it's not indicative of socioeconomic status, but it's indicative of a status of people living in our city that, um, you know, might be really informative for us. So that was just the other thought I had. Yeah, I was just going to add that when I talked to Sarah Bankert, the program manager at Collaborative um, uh, Educational Services about the demographic, she said, basically they're gonna wanna, um, it's a large grant and they have the funds to um, co collect actually more comprehensive data than the city does. I told her what, what collected just, you know, when you apply. And she says they would like more like socioeconomic other. Um, so they're when they do it, when they start collecting uh, information on board, they're going to be, I'm not really sure how they'll do it, um, but um, they're going to be a little bit more kind of assertive about what, you know, trying to get that information and not just look at applications. So that's exciting, but it's, it hasn't, you know, it's down the line. So, um, yeah. Do you know how far down the line? Good Does question. this have to go through the mayor floor? Yes. Right, I thought so because you're looking at a privacy thing here. Oh, oh, right? that, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What What are you referring to? The the request for demographic? Well, except is it public information anyway? I don't know. Is yeah. it public information? I don't know. No. I don't know. I know I that. Guess. Let me explain one thing. I oh, probably about two years ago or so, we had a problem. I did, where I had a resident who wanted to know how many people in Florence Heights, Hampshire Heights, who attended the schools were of color or were of whatever, okay? I talked with the mayor's office and forewarned the superintendent of this person asking those questions. And him and I talked and he said there is no way that they would give out that information to anybody, to anybody, okay? And this person did not want to have the lumber apartments, the lumberyard apartments put in because it was bringing in other people from other communities, okay? So that, I ran into a problem with that. And I did talk with the superintendent, John Provost at that time, and there was no way he would give out that information. I pre-warned him of that phone call and of that resident calling for that information in the mayor's office. So that's why I'm just forewarning, can we actually do this or not? Or is this done through the school system and the mayor? I don't know. Oh, I'm just looking over Sarah's email she sent me on this topic. And she said what she's going to do is, um, let's see, um, she's going to ask each committee to um, complete demographic data. So she's not going to look, she's not going to be requesting the applications, but she is going to go to each committee or board and ask them to fill one out for their committee or board. Um, yeah. Like, she I didn't like say anything about permissions. Um, she just says, as part of the grant, I can imagine collectively developing a tool that is used in multiple agencies and municipalities along with. But what is she looking for? Um, she's looking for, you know, um, anything that's an, it kind of could be an indicator of kind of equity on board, probably age, um, socioeconomic, uh, race, ethnicity, ethnic, excuse me, ethnicity. And uh, See, that was the problem we ran into was race. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, the applications do allow people to self-report. So, right. um, you know, looking at the applications, they are public record. We would have to sift through them. Um, and of course, some people will choose not to self-report. Right. Um, but that information actually 
is something that many people have answered. Mm -hmm. So Laura, you'll check that out. I'm confused now how to leave you. I know. Be at this point saying that the grant, the um, educational collaborative, is collecting the information. So, am I still? Is the direction for me to go to the mayor's office and ask them again, renew the request for the information? And they weren't going to do it by looking at the applications. I think they reached the conclusion the easier way was to contact the chair, since the applications are not in one place. I'm getting nothing but echoes. Through here. Labarge, can you mute while Laura's talking? I know. I'm, I'm, my head you is pounding I mean? with echoes. There we go. Okay. I think that's going to eliminate the feedback. Seems to. Um, so yes, I'm just, um, I wasn't sure what the timeline was for the educational collaborative collecting that information. If that means that, am I still? Do you still want me to go renew the request to the mayor's office for the demographic and and offer the. Um, Alternative that you know, Council Foster is also willing to contact the chairs if for some reason this isn't something they can accommodate or you know. Yeah, I don't see a timeline. I was just looking at um, no, Sarah's email. Me. I don't see I a timeline. Oh, excuse me. oh no. <laughs> oh boy. I, okay, because my speaker's off. Why can't I hear that? Karen and. I'm so confused. Yes, Councilor. Foster and Councillor Rachel Moore, you need to step in to help her out. She's really confused here of, <laughs> of what you're actually looking for. I don't for. know. I just can't hear them right <laughs> now. It's that she can't hear. Um, um, trying to figure out what to yeah, do. Yeah, there's, so there's no timeline okay. that the, I see. We can turn um, my speakers on. Yes, it's given, but perhaps we could. Um, I can't hear them um, speaking yeah, now. Yeah, I should be able to do that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, we had no speaker. Oh dear. Now, can you hear us? Oh, well, as long as I don't talk. Yeah. I can hear you and you're not, you're not echoing. Huh. Yeah, yeah. On my own. Huh. Oh. That's a penguin dance. Like a spaceship landing. <laughs> uh, Laura, can you hear me? You know what? Oh. What's the matter, huh? Well, I can't hear them, and when I can hear them, oh, Rachel, dear. try again. There you okay. Go. I'm going to join Councillor Labarge over here. <laughs> and we won't have to deal with my speaker or microphone. Uh oh, now we can't hear you guys. Why? Oh, well, we're not talking. There you oh. go. There you go. Suddenly, I'm got sorry. I raised my hand. Togetherness. I don't yeah. know if you, right. I don't know if uh, you two got my email today. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate, but um, I was just thinking before we pursue something, maybe it is worth either bringing Sarah Banker here to, to present on, on what they're going to be doing around equity and boards or just having um, Councillor Foster or one of us call Sarah and ask her. So, um, or, you know, if you think it's prudent. Um, <laughs> Maybe it's not appropriate. I don't know. So she's not part of. I just don't know how. You know, it seems like that. I don't know how long their time frame is for yeah. the project, and whether, yeah. Um, I think it's what, at least a year. What if? What if you talked with that person she's talked talking about? No. Well, I could. Um, but I think we need to go through the mayor. Well. So, but Count, I thought I heard Councilor Mayori say the person at the Educational Collaborative was actually going to contact the chairs directly. I mean, I assume they're still going to need contact information, if nothing else, from the mayor's office. Right. 
it almost seems like it's not really going to save the mayor's office any work to have right. them do it because they're going to have to get the information from the mayor's office. Right. That's true, Laura. That's true. I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, whatever you think. Um, yes. And they're going to be able to get a lot of it also from the school department through the superintendent because when him and I taught, they have it. Yeah. Well, so she presented recently at the um, Board of Health, and I don't know what the angle was. Um, Sarah Banker the, from CES about boards and equity. I don't know how that got started. So she, I'm just wondering if she already went through the mayor or I don't know. I don't know. I have to started. agree with you. They got to have the information somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have it compiled. It, it is in individual applications, which are exactly. in numerous different places. They're not in a single data source. So it's almost quicker, to, it seems like, to go to, I thought the conclusion was reached that it would be easier than trying to find people's individual applications right. um, to go to the chairs. And it sounds like Cou Councilor Foster. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, is it appropriate then that we invite Sarah Bankert to our next meeting to talk with us? And I would, I would actually love to hear more about, I can call her, but um, I think it would be valuable for us as city services to hear more about the grant and the work that they're doing because it sure yeah. seems like to work. Together. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting, actually. Actually, yeah. I mean, I bet they haven't done much yet. It hasn't. So I right. think it'd be great to hear what they're planning to do and then bring it back in a year. And and the time. Well, we don't have to get permission from the mayor because she's not. She doesn't have yeah. to bear it. Okay. Both. But it's not a department. Yeah, it, it hasn't typically been under city services purview. That's usually been oh, the right. departmental operations. But I don't know anything that precludes you from asking whoever you want. I mean, because you, I wouldn't go through the mayor's office. I would just invite that person. So. Yeah. Well, maybe we need to take a vote for her to speak, just like we would a resident expert. Like if we recognized her? Yeah. Like we did for the charter. Yeah. Maybe that's the way to go about having someone who's not actually a, a department head. I thought our charge with city service is strictly department heads throughout the city. Right. Well, yeah, that's so my I, understanding too, but yet I, I would say, love it. I'd like to time. invite all the agencies out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, whatever you think. This one is so relevant to a city service, right? Because it's the mayor's office that's doing the appointment. So this it feels to me really relevant. Um, I understand that. I'd say bring them in. They want to come in and speak. I'm, yeah. I'm welcoming them and come in. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could do that, and perhaps we'll just vote to be, have her recognized, um, just as a kind of precaution um, protocol. It doesn't hurt to bring her in or him and to speak. But I still yeah, but want to make sure that you talk with the mayor's office about this. Oh, uh, I don't think they'd have any <laughs> right. Um, well, what, right so to we, say no. I don't know. You're the one that told me that we had to be careful, Laura. Oh, but that's just when you're inviting um, executive office employees, people who work for the city. As far as no, as outside agencies, I told you once before with city services, we used to invite all the agencies throughout the city. It was wonderful. And then you stated because of our ordinances that we have, that ours is strictly city department. Right, but that's a, that's for the council rules. So it's really exactly. up to the council, I suppose. But, and if they, if it's related, you know, to a city. I know, to that, me, I don't have a problem with it. I'm Let's hearing. let them come in and speak. Uh, would the process be, I'm happy to, she's already, I've already asked her in a general sense, would she be willing? She said she'd be more than happy to. Uh, is the process when someone's invited, Laura, that you invite them? I, I couldn't, I don't yeah, mind. I'd, I'd be happy to. I, that's, do I, okay. And, okay. Now, do yeah, we have to get permission like we do with might. all the department heads here in the city? I'm going to call the mayor's office tomorrow because you, Laura, tell us we you have to let the mayor know we're bringing in a department head right. so now that we're bringing an outside person do you have to go through the mayor to say we are bringing a guest sarah might know the answer I know. She she she's on the board of health um presenting to the board of health so she might actually know 
that procedure. I don't could know. Could be. You could ask Sarah, I guess. Or just book them in. All right. Yeah. I, I, I the, Laura, uh, let me know if you need any help around that. I, you know, okay. I will. I've just opened up the, the council rules here. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to read uh, what it says our jurisdiction is on this committee is matters related to the activities and operation of municipal government. It doesn't preclude us from asking questions of anyone um, uh, that way. Uh, you know, it doesn't, that's not what the ordinance says. Uh, so right. I, I understand that I'm not reading that, but this does seem like it is a matter that's related to the activities and operation of the government here. So it, mm -hmm. it seems appropriate to me. Thank you, Councilor Quinlan. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good enough. All right, there's a lot of agencies we could be bringing in here. Yeah, I think it'd be very dynamic, actually. I know. Okay. Okay. And when do you want to do that? November. What? November, I was just thinking. Do you, when do you want to do that, Counselor? I would vote for a sooner rather than later, just, just so that we know what our plan might be in terms of pursuing um, that information around equity and boards and, and committees. For November? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, I want DPW to come in first, then we'll have yours come up. How's that? Sounds great. We'll swing it in. Give, give Anne Marie another month uh, reprieve. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but at the same time, you want me to pursue the demographic request from the mayor's office, right? This doesn't. This is no, not I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm okay. comfortable waiting on that. I would love to talk with Sarah Banker and learn more about their project and how we can work together. I, I am very invested in, you know, sort of looking at the information, but um, how we go about it, I, I don't want to create more work for anybody. Um, so um, hold up. I, I'm comfortable with that, but Councilors Mayori and Quinlan, um, tell me what you think too. I think that's a great uh, idea. Yeah, I think there might be even areas of collaboration or yeah. 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 streamlining resources. How about you, Councillor Quinlan? Sorry, looking around. Uh, yeah, I, I, I say one thing at a time. Uh, we don't need yeah. to do do something that then we find out is going to be done for us, uh, or vice versa. Um, okay. Great. Okay. Okay. So you're going to work on that, Councillor Mayor, right? Yeah, I'll I'll and get that set up with Laura it. for November. Okay. Yes. I'll, Laura and I will check in about it. All right, I guess that takes care of that. And Karen, hopefully that you can move on with your request. And let's do, because I like what you're thinking about also. And we can move forward on that, maybe hopefully by get it in for December. Sure. How's that sound? Yeah, you know, I'd love to, I think that'll be helpful in, in thinking about a path toward it. So. Um. You know, Will that give that, you enough of time to get organized with that for December? Maybe just have a plan yeah. by December instead of the actual information, right? Yeah. Exactly. I, yeah. yeah, I think <laughs> I view this yeah. a longer term project. Yeah. I you know, I I don't expect to have it right away. I just wanna not drop the ball. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I know of no other business. We need one final motion. Move to adjourn. I didn't hear it. Okay. Second. All in favor? Oh, it's a roll call, right? Adjourn. I I do a roll call. Can I consider somebody a second there? I just... uh, second. I thought she Thank said you. second. Oh. Councilor Foster? Yes. Councilor Mayori? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. And Councilor Quinlan? Yes. Oh. Bye.